guys, we're going to talk about something today that we've talked about before. But it seems that no matter how many times we talk about it, I still got a problem with it. I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're going to figure that out on this week's Tuesday Morning Tech Tip from Publicity Speed Shop. Something that everybody kind of in the, uh, not everybody, it's a touchy subject, all right? When I was younger, I called all the guys that couldn't, you know, if you didn't do it yourself, you were a gray beard. That was the thing. Now, uh, I get the irony, but, uh, you know, you paid somebody else to work on your car. You know, you didn't do it yourself. You're a poser, right? Oh, man, how could you, you call yourself a, a hot rod. You call yourself a car guy. Somebody else painted your car. Somebody else did this, somebody else did that. Guys, we used to judge the ever-loving hell out of these people. And, uh, and I got a couple years under my belt. Looking at things a little bit differently nowadays. Because, uh, well, there's something to be said for time saved. Uh, there's something to be said for uh, being able to work on something else. Well, the thing that you might not be so good at or you might not enjoy doing gets taken care of by somebody else. I mean, does that make me a gray beard? No, I think the fact that I'm 47 and uh, there's more gray than, uh, than there is black is what makes me a <laughs> gray beard. But I, there's obviously a ton of stuff I still do myself. I mean, more than things I would farm out. But every now and then, you got to know your limits. Actually, guys, you should always know your limits. Every now and then, you got to, like, exercise knowing your limits. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, you know, you got to call for the relief, right? Sometimes you got to do it. Is it a blow to our pride? It shouldn't be, right? Everybody's good at something, right? Everybody's got their thing. And uh, that's the, what makes the world go around, right? Like, you know, you got, you got plumbers, electricians, carpenters, welders, this, that, whatever. And uh, relying on these other trades is what makes the world go around. I used to bitch all the time. I, used to, I, I know, crazy to believe, right? But I remember me and my buddies, um, we saw a little car club out there in California. And we'd go out cruising, we'd go to different car shows, and just, just hang out, you know, hang out in the shop, people's garages, working on stuff, whatever, right? That's what we did. It was great. I was, you know, I was in my early to mid-20s. Um, I thought I knew it all. I was going to take over the world, right? And you see all the older guys who usually had nicer cars than us because they had a little more money, right? And we're like, ah, these graybeards, man, they don't, they don't, you know. Somebody else built their car. And you see different, uh, we used to see things outside of some of the shows we go to, many of the rockabilly type shows, right, which I absolutely love, guys. There was uh, the signs in front of some of the clubs. Like they go as a club, right? And it'd be like, if you didn't build it, don't bring it. And I was like, that's awesome. And then I was like, but there's guys that, like, that do build cars and like, dude, shut up. That's that's how they make their livelihood, right? If it wasn't for guys stroking checks to get a car built, what are those guys gonna do, right? They, you know, they, they, they make a great living building vehicles for somebody else. And I never really thought about that because I was like, oh, I'm gonna open a hot rod shop one day. And I was like, well, I probably shouldn't have that mentality. <laughs> I'm not gonna have a very successful shop if I'm talking trash about people that I'm providing a service for. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. And as the older I get, the more I kind of like, eh. But I, now, the older I got, the more I experienced I got to where I did know how to do more things. And, um, but I also screwed up some stuff, right? Um, perfect example is my 53 Pontiac. I did a lot of things really great. I had a ton of energy and motivation. 
not a lot of money, so I was innovative on how I would do some things. Uh, but it made problems down the road. It really came to light and thought of it as I was kind of thinking out loud with Jay when we were working on the Merc. So, that cross member, that was a godsend, guys. Having been cut that, put them flanges, and did an excellent job, right? Way better than I could do. He's a fabricator. I'm not, right? Now, I could have cut it and probably cobbled something together and ground it down so the welds looked decent and painted it, but it would take me longer. There's a really good chance I'd have screwed it up. And um, who knows how strong it would have been, right? I don't have that much faith in my welds, which most stuff I've welded, welded is like, you need to practice. And the second you, you know, you're not practicing all the time, you start to get worse at it. So like when I was welded, when I was younger, when I was putting my Pontiac together to the stage where it was at, where it's kind of at now, then I quit working on it. I was welding all the time. So I was never great, but they didn't look the best, but they were strong. Now I don't know that they need to be strong, right? Because I haven't done it for a while. That's just how that goes. You know, you got to stay, you know, regular. But uh, while we were doing that, my buddy Louie was over to help me out. And, man, we, uh, we did a ton of work. Louie is always getting after it, right? And he's a solid welder, way better than me. So he welded up my... Um, my motor mounts in there. I, I cut everything. Um, I'm going to make his stuff look good. That's polish it a turd, if you will, right? So I cut everything out, made it look really neat. Louie would cut, weld it everything, and I would grind it and make it all look nice. And it came out, it looks, it looks like that motor was meant to be in there. And uh, we, it, it, it's exactly what I want. Well, when I took a look at that cross member that, that Jay had made, I was like, man, that's what we should have done on my Pontiac. Now, like he said in the video, his is a perimeter frame and the X frame, so that center is, it's wonky in there, right? The way my original motor and trans was in there, I had a flat, flathead inline six mounted front and back um, and a hydromatic trans. Hydromatic. So that just didn't, uh, it was totally different than the inline six and the power glide I got in there now. So I should have went and got a universal cross member for a power glide. Instead, trying to save a couple bucks, we, uh, we took the scrap metal we had there and kind of triangulated some things and made it all work. And it's sturdy. Problem is, I ain't getting out of there. Not without cutting it all apart. And um, that's just, it's not good for servicing, base maintenance, whatever. But I wasn't thinking about that. I'm like, this is a known good trans. I'm putting it in. That doesn't mean it's not ever going to break, right? So watching the, what Jay did on the Merc there, we looked at it. We, we figured out this is what we need to do. And uh, like, he's like, hey, I got a guy. Jay always has a guy, by the way. So um, he hits Ben up. Ben comes and looks at it, agrees with what we said we need to do, and did it, and it came out great. And you see, it just it came out. How'd Jay say it? Something like that? Yeah. Um, that's how it worked. Now, even on top of that, to make it better, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm not a Ford guy, but man, taking that panel off, money dude that was awesome um i'm actually looking at a way if i could probably do something like that in my car just because this just to get to everything guys oh my god that was amazing now i don't know how if that had to do with the way the three speed was originally in there or with that x frame slash whatever thing um but uh the whole thing was great and that leads me to what I've been trying to say is know your limits, right? We knew that was not the job for us. 
we, like I said, we could have got it done. And he said in the video, we wouldn't have had the faith that we have in it right now. It still wouldn't be done. So that means the trans wouldn't be out. We wouldn't. Jay's actually got um, the tail shaft off right now, and he's looking at all that stuff. Trying, he's got the, the, um, the drive shaft back. He's going into all that. He, we wouldn't be there. It'd still be okay. Where do we cut? Okay, now we got to weld this and fab this and do that. And uh, so, was it worth the money he spent to do that? Absolutely, right? To the point, like, let's say, like, we were younger and we paid somebody to do that and didn't have the money, right? Like, well, we had to have the money to get that done. Otherwise, that's called theft. But, you know, we had to wait on something else. It's worth it. Build it once, build it right, you know? So now I'm looking at my Pontiac. Even though I'm not on the project right now, and I'll get there. I got it. But when we go to when I go to work on it, I'm going to be taking things apart and re redoing stuff that we did. Now, granted, I did 10, 15 years ago. Things have changed. Hot riding has changed. There's different stuff out there. I've learned a lot. Lots of things are different from you know, 2009. I think I did that. Yeah. So you live and learn, right? But uh, it's the same reason that my 65 sitting in that corner over there. I know my limits. I do not trust myself to cut that rocker out, cut the back of that cab out, and, all that, and weld it all. I'm not the guy. I'm just not. There's a guy out there. I'm pretty sure I found him. But uh, it ain't me. So that's like the secret to being good is knowing your limits. Because if you don't, You know, you, you step too further, you fall, you know, you fall on your face. Now, there's a sweet spot because you don't want to overthink it and not do things that you can do because uh, you don't make any money in your projects. You know what I'm saying? When I say make money, I'm not talking about like flipping it and making money. I mean making progress. That's, it's an industry term. Dead on, balls accurate. It's an industry term. So... Think about that. Well, you know, Jay, Jay had that guy taking care of that stuff while he was researching other things, doing other stuff, whatever. You can always, I don't know. And it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is, know when to make that call before you go too far. And then it's going to either cost you a ton more in money, time, or something for that guy to fix your mistake. Been there too. Thanks for watching, guys.